Well, I guess that is pretty much what you'd expect to do. Um, you know, I guess it's uh, the best place to build it because your units are already there protecting things. Um, looks like we got ourselves, uh, there is a... Uh, oh, Sango! Sango's in trouble! Oh, Sango loses a huge chunk of probes! What was Sango thinking attacking the observatory? Um, he had no reason to attack it. Basically, he was bored and he was like, my probes can go and attack an observatory instead of standing around being protected. So, very, very bad move there by Sango and a good catch by Gwemchi. Sango had the uh, probe advantage before that drop, actually. He had more probes, but now it looks like both are reset, basically, back to four probes and a couple of pylons. I mean, this is amazing. I don't know who's ahead on the pylon count. It could be that uh, Gwemchi is also ahead of that. Basically, a complete mirror, uh, you know, a mirror reflection, um, and it's just an amazing move. I've not seen this before, a complete mirror base switch of the mains. Um, this is amazing, and uh, certainly funny, coming from two players who I didn't think was gonna, we were going to really be able to produce an exciting game, but uh, the circumstances produced them, really. Anyway, it looks like a big spite in the middle here. It looks like it's going to be very close. Gwemchi and Sango both uh, going to lose a lot of Dragoons here, but it looks like maybe just maybe Gremchi's gonna come out ahead Gremchi yes should come out ahead here but it oh wait he only has one Dragoon left it looks like both players with one Dragoon left possibly one more Dragoon left for Sango no neither players Dragoons uh, actually one for Sango one Dragoon left for Sango in advantage but look at this we've got ourselves the drop of the Reaver inside of Sango's base but I do expect Sango's gonna do the same thing I mean now that both players are traded armies that those nexuses and probes are not gonna be very effective at all without uh, you know obviously with those Reavers coming around and uh, what is going on inside now of uh, Gwemchi's base I mean Sango obviously needs to kill this economy ASAP uh, he is gonna do just that right now um, he is up a Dragoon, don't forget, and that's going to be critical, possibly, because obviously the Dragoon could make the difference. I mean, the Dragoon's the only thing that can shoot down shuttles, um, and it doesn't look like Sango, uh, I mean, Gwemchi has any other uh, buildings. He doesn't have another Dragoon, obviously, um, so I don't know if he has anything going on for him. Neither does, uh, does Gwemchi, but, I mean, does Sango, but still, Sango has that one Dragoon advantage, um, and we don't know who has the advantage in the bank, which is going to be important. Inside of Sango's base, um, which I guess is the left side base, there's no probes being built. So that's a bit worrying for him. Um, and meanwhile, I don't know what the plan is for uh, Gwemchi. There's Gwemchi just circling around up there. He's going to try to snipe the Dragoon, and that should possibly lead to a forced uh, tie. Or maybe not. Depends on how many minerals they have, actually, because of the Reaver Scarabs. That's right. Reaver Scarabs do cost money. And uh, both players are going to be very low on on money very soon. And, oh, man, with perfect micro, uh, which that wasn't, by the way. San I was going to say, Sanko could uh, just pick up the Dragoon and uh, and save it. But it looks like, okay, good save there by Sanko. He's going to make um, Gwemchi waste some scarabs. And that uh, that could be the end of Gwemchi. You know, the judges could force this one to end um, basically in favor of Sanko because Gwemchi might have fewer minerals. Of course, we don't know that. We don't know that at all. But if both of them ran out of, ran out of minerals, obviously uh, Sango would win because he has the only unit that can fire things, you know, which is namely that Dragoon. Um, of course, we're going to see uh, Sango, I mean, we're going to see Gwemchi try to take care of it. Sango is not going to let that happen. I think Sango's got this game, actually. As long as something uh, bizarre doesn't happen, Gwemchi is not going to be able to do anything. If Sango can just pick up that Dragoon every time he sees a Scarab, he'll be fine. Otherwise, it would be a tie at best, I think. So yeah, we're seeing this Dragoon being dropped. Uh, weird. Interesting. I guess he's just really trying to pick off at the health there without uh, putting, leaving himself vulnerable to Scarab. Man, this could last a while though because both players are going to be very, very uh, careful with their, with their micro. I mean, they're very good at micro in general, but when we have one unit to micro, <laughs> there is, uh, there's Sangho um, and Gwemchi dancing around there with their shuttles. Oh man, this is very interesting. There's Gwemchi's first person view. He is going to have a lot of problems here. Um, he only has 40, I think, minerals left in the bank. I'm not sure how many scarabs. I'm going to guess five, but uh, that might not be right. He's uh, using a probe, I think, to attack the main base of uh, Gwemchi, but Gwemchi's not going to mind that. I don't think, uh, I'm sorry, of Sangho. Sangho's not going to mind that because there's just way too many hit points there. So very weird game here in the STX Masters. Um, definitely uh, an odd way to end it no matter who wins or if it ties. Uh-oh, here we come. Nope. 
There's the dance again. Excuse me. And uh, anyway, there is the sight of uh, Sangho playing incredibly carefully. Um, he, he does not want to lose that Dragoon. That Dragoon can only handle one shot, I believe. Uh-oh, uh-oh, nope, not going to do anything. Yeah, like I said, with this kind of... Um, with this kind of uh, very good micro from pro gamers, I do not expect Sangho to ever lose that Dragoon in any situation. I mean, he is focusing on just a shuttle and a Dragoon. It's like one of those uh, UMS maps where you, like, uh, I don't know, where you have a shuttle and a Dragoon, when you, like, play basketball or something. Like, I played a horrible UMS map where you played basketball with a shuttle and, like, a couple of units inside. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's like that. I mean, except it's pro gamers with, like, 300 APM controlling this. Sangho looking, um, you know, just bored, really. I mean, Sanko has this in the bag as long as he doesn't mess up. Webchi, uh, excuse me. Sorry, but th both of these players are so boring, their names are making me sleep. Like, I can't even remember their names. Gwemchi and Sangho and Ryan. I mean, seriously. Uh, and, <laughs> and to be honest, except for that moment, I would say this map really made this game brilliant. Not necessarily the players. Uh, this game was spectacular because of the fact that by accident, I think, both of them you know, went past each other and then went to destroy each other. Um, and, and really, I, I think it was, you know, when the moment they decided to have a pivotal battle, the economy game was over once again, because their probes were not going to be able to keep mining with, uh, you know, with any winner of that battle having units. Um, so yeah, we're seeing uh, mining going on here from Sangho. Sangho's just going to protect his one probe that's mining, which is going to be fine. Um, although, I suppose uh, it's possible... No, it's still not possible for Sangho to uh, to to be tied because as long as that dragoon can stay alive, um, it doesn't even matter if if Gwemchi kills all the probes and Sangho doesn't have enough money to build a probe, because Sangho is still gonna be able to walk around that dragoon and eventually kill the last building. So I I think you know it's gonna be a really long micro battle, but or it could be a long micro battle if Gwemchi doesn't give up earlier. Uh, if they really try to you know. If Gremchi forces us to watch us, uh, watch him try to save his remaining buildings against a Dragoon, that's going to be really boring. But I'm going to watch it no matter what. Looks like there's Gremchi going to go for something. He hits a Nexus. Uh, that's not going to do anything. When he runs out of minerals, I do expect him to give up. Man, these are not good here. Not good. There's Sanko. He knows it. Well, you can't really see from his facial expressions, but uh, he knows it. <laughs> I know it. Everybody knows it. This game is over. Um, I can't say who played better because uh, it really was such a weird game that it really came down to just who had that one extra Dragoon. That could have been just dumb luck, you know, in the middle of that battle. Looks like, uh, yeah, Sanko doing a good job here, protecting his perimeter. There is Gwemchi looking resigned. Um, he knows that it's not good for him. Not good. So uh, I will be back into... Uh, casting mode for the next few weeks then I uh, cannot promise I'll be able to keep you know a high rate up this fall I'll be more available than I was this summer though hopefully uh, there we go more attempts here from Gwemchi but Gwemchi's gonna lose that shuttle soon there's no way Gwemchi dude even say even you know the worst Protoss player can do this I mean backhoe can handle this I think um, Dr. K could handle this oh man look at this uh, oh man the reaver from uh, Gwemchi getting destroyed, and he gives up the ghost. Gwemchi, GG's. There is Sanghol, the winner of this game. Uh, an interesting game, to say the least. Um, I don't know if it was a, an absolutely spectacular game, but certainly it was a fun game to watch. Uh, actually, no, it was a fun game to think about, I guess. More than watch, but, uh, anyway, uh, I am done casting for the night, so hope you guys enjoyed, uh, these three commentaries, and, uh, I'll be around, so, uh, keep your messages coming, and thank you all for, uh, uh, sending all those messages to me while I was away on my profile. I just got a chance to check, um, so, yeah, GG's, and, uh, I'll see you soon.